We got a listener question from Carl in Monroe. My parents have told me for years that investing in real estate is a tried and true method of making money. What are some simple steps for a beginner to take to get started? And I have some great answers for you, and I'm going to break it down uh, for you into a total of seven points. Number one, you got to know your numbers. You got to invest for cash flow and you have to be able to analyze properties very quickly. And the way I suggest you do that is by using the 1% rule. The 1% rule is simple. If a house rents for at least 1% of the purchase price or the acquisition cost, it might, might, M-I-G-H-T, all capital letters might be a good investment. So if a property, for example, you were buying it for, let's just say $100,000, and I know you can't buy $100,000 properties in Atlanta, uh, not right now anyway, but according to the 1% rule, it should rent for at least $1,000 a month. If it rents for $1,000 a month, then it passes the 1% rule, and on average, it should turn out to be a good investment for you. Once you've determined whether or not it meets the 1% rule, you're going to have to do some additional research to get all the information you need about, you know, income and expenses and all of that kind of good stuff. But the 1% rule, great way to get started. And tip number one, tip number two, know the high cost of living areas. Ever heard anyone complain they live in San Francisco or New York, so they can't invest in real estate? Makes sense to me that they would be correct. And the 1% rule can show you why if you buy, buy a house, for example, for $900,000, but it rents for $3,000 a month, you're nowhere near passing the 1% rule. Some argue that you'll make it up in appreciation. And, and the truth is, is that those high cost of living areas can have significant appreciation, but they also have, you know, a very volatile market. It goes way up and way down, way up and way down. And, and all of the changes in pricing from the rest of the country are exacerbated in those areas. And so my advice for you, if it doesn't meet the 1% rule and you're in a high cost of living area, I'd look for somewhere else to invest my money. There's many, many second and third tier cities. And I mean, in terms of population around the country and great places to invest. So you gotta know what I call the cash flow myth. You want to follow the 50% rule, approximately 50% of your gross rent on a single family property will go to expenses, taxes, insurance, repairs, HOA, capital expenditures, property management. Remember, a mortgage, though, is not included in that 50%. So if you bought that house for $100,000, rents for $1,000 a month in our example, $500 is considered expenses. Might not be quite that much in Metro Atlanta, but let's say your mortgage payment is additional $600 per month. 600 per month. Your cash flow basically is 400 a month because a thousand rent minus 600 mortgage equals $400 in profit, right? <laughs> the reality is you have an additional $500 in expenses and a $600 mortgage, which is a total of $1,100 a month, which puts you in a negative cash flow position. I would suggest that under no circumstances should you invest in a property that does not generate positive cash flow on a monthly basis. So number four, know your finances. You should get your finances in order before diving in. I am in the process of selling my current home, buying a new home. I'm a fairly organized person, but to get everything together for the lenders and everybody who needs stuff, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So my suggestion is get all that together and make sure you are prepared. And if you're not sure whether or not you're prepared to buy a home, then have a conversation with a lender. Tip number five, on your first few houses, play it safe. Pay off debt, especially credit card debt, before you mess around with any real estate investing. Certainly bonus points for paying off vehicles and student loans before investing as well. Put 20% down on investment properties. For the most part, I put 30 or 35% down and try to get you a fixed rate mortgage for 30 years. Gen gen generally, even if I can get a better rate at 15 years, I get a 30 year rate. So the payment is more affordable. And I always try to pay down additional principal every single month. I'm not investing for the cash flow myself. I'm investing for retirement. Don't make investments that don't seem like good investments initially. And I hate to say it, but sort of set a higher bar, set a higher standard. If an investment doesn't perform correctly, then move on. Number six tip is have some cash reserves. If you do not have some cash in the bank, then Murphy's Law says you will continuously have issues to deal with on your rental property that actually require cash. If you have a little cash in the bank, then 
you won't have any unexpected expenses. I know I'm generalizing, but that is the way it's always worked out for me. And the last tip is educate yourself. You need to pick a certain amount of time, but not too much time to educate, educate yourself on real estate, to maybe give yourself three months or six months and soak in all the information you can, read books, listen to podcasts, and then you could commit to taking some sort of action. If you have wanted to be a real estate investor, sometime in the next few months, we're going to have an online real estate investing seminar where you can ask any questions you want to ask. So make sure you stay tuned to the radio show so you will catch when that is going to be on the schedule. 